Hey, what's up guys? I'm Virgil Horny. Welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, Roads to Hour. So before we leave Germany, we're going to do a few of these contracts that we have here, including this one, which we have not yet done. This one seems like a pretty good payday. So somebody had asked about this in the last episode. So if you're curious how you know which locations to go to in order to get those bonuses for the traveling, you can see those on the map. And so these crowns here, you hover over them and you'll see uh, which experience you'll get. So in this case, it's stewardship. Uh, over here is marshal, and this one is diplomacy. And you'll also see the locations that you've already been to. So you see the check marks and all of these points of interest that we've already visited. So there's a few over here that we didn't visit. I'm not sure how we missed this one here. There's several other in Scandinavia that we missed as well. Missed a few over here, though I think many of these ones are just the Alpha's Dyke. So we went to three of those. But we could have got 25 martial experience for going to each one. But yeah, that's how you know where you'll get the, the bonuses. So we can kind of try and hit some more of those places as we travel. You know, customize our rounds so that we'll hit more of those. So of course we're going to go with this option here. We have that available because of our traits. And then yeah, we'll go with the, the balanced option. So our newest concubine, Osterhild, has given birth to a son. And remember, she does have the robust trait. And thus he has gotten the Herculean trait. Since, you know, if you have two characters that have the same type of trait, then they can combine to give you an upgraded level. So this is an incredibly powerful, healthy, and strong newborn baby. Uh, the prowess would be sitting at eight right from the start. Also gives him a health boost. He gets increased prestige and attraction opinion. And so we're gonna go ahead and name him Thor. Now, another thing of note is that another one of our concubines, Valence, she's pregnant again. After with the last one, she had that miscarriage. Hopefully she has better luck this time. Now, you'll notice that she's sick, as are many of our other characters. Our wife is, uh, this guy is, I think several of our children are. I'm not entirely sure what happened here. Probably one of those dumb travel events that you always get. I bet we all ate some, some bad plants or something like that. Uh, but yeah, we're still doing pretty good here, despite having many sick characters. Uh, just overall, it seems like we're decent at this type of... Uh, this type of scheme. But you notice that the phases are really long. Uh, we also just lost our caravan master. Yeah, she died from being ill, and I think we lost our doctor too. So I should go ahead and get the doctor replaced. I don't know if we have anybody who would do well at that position. Uh, Emunder just came of age. He is just an adequate bargainer. So that's unfortunate. None of our children are getting the higher level education traits. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what positions we need to replace here. So obviously there's the Caravan Master. Could put Ganuba in that position, but he already has quite a few officer positions. So it'd be better to put Diedrich as the Caravan Master. And then with our personal position, we actually have somebody who has a good aptitude here. I'm not entirely sure who this character is. It's one of our champions, 61 years old. Got him at some point. I don't remember when, but uh, let's go and get him pointed because I think that makes him a better doctor than our previous one. Now we do want to set him to do the advanced research. Cost us a bit of money, but we'll get us the monthly lifestyle experience bonus. So that's gonna be a bit higher than what we were getting. But yeah, unfortunately, this is gonna take us a while to do this particular contract, due to the long phases and the fact that the success chance, while the maximum is 100%, it's going up really slowly. And so with each phase, we're only gaining a few percent. Uh, we had a follower, uh, Sigrik, who's now known as the Handsome, and we had another Sunborn. He also got the robust traits, and we're gonna name him Balder. So we have quite a few sons. Uh, let me just take a look and see if any of them need to be assigned an education. Seems that Ivar has gotten his childhood trait, which is bossy. So that means we could either go with the martial education or the stewardship. Well, we don't have a steward focused son, so that's what we'll do. I don't know that we'd be playing as Ivar. I mean, really, my preference would now be Thor just because of his uh, really good physical trait here. I don't know. He is really young. Magni here, 18. And uh, hopefully, he'll eventually get his wife pregnant, though. She's not doing well. 
On top of the drunkard trait which she already had when they got married, she's now reclusive. So she got that due to stress. And she's still ill as well. But again, that's something that uh, is the case with many of our followers. And here's our father-in-law. Or I guess he's not our father-in-law, he's our son's father-in-law. He just died. Died of old age. He was 80 years old. Remember he was the Jarl of Lancaster. And so it seems that his son has taken over. He's just 11 years old. I don't think we'd noticed that it was going to be a boy taking over uh, in that particular yarn home. Seems that Magni and Sigrid are still getting along. Remember, this is his crush. I don't think they have any relationship now. Yeah, no relationship at the moment. I'm noticing that he is friends with his brother Emunder, so that's good. So at least they'll be close, but yeah, we don't really care about this. We're gonna try to break them hard, not worth the effort, and we'd fail anyways, so we'll just say like, good for them. But, you know, I guess it's good to see they're still getting along. Uh, we just got a martial hurt, excellent. So let's go ahead and get, I think we're gonna do the hit and run tactics next. So yeah, we're gonna grab that. And then after that, we'll go down these two hurts to be able to finish up this particular branch. So again, we got this event, Crimes of Hashin, but this time it's involving our wife, Thora. She does not have a great prowess, so Diedrich here would most likely kill her. I don't think we'd allow this guy to kill our wife. Even if we're not the most, like, caring type of character, that'd be a, a sign of disrespect that we wouldn't allow. You know, it is our spouse. So we're going to intervene. It's a diplomacy challenge. We only have a 46% chance that we're able to put a halt to this. 53% chance that blows are thrown regardless, but they'll just be wounded rather than fighting to the death. So we're going to intervene. And it looks like we did fail. Okay, so they have both become wounded. At least that's fair. They both got some blows in, and our wife wasn't killed, so that's what's important here. Uh, so another one of our mistresses, uh, Valen, she just had a child, and she is pregnant again. So five months pregnant. Seems like we are really having a lot of children here. Uh, we need to go through our children. Just make sure that they all have some guardians. So in the case of Wolfgar, we did assign him to the intrigue education, but I didn't actually assign anybody to educate him. Now, we could do that ourselves with the 20 intrigue. We also don't have any wards, so yeah, it makes sense. There might be better options. You know, people who have slightly higher intrigue, so yeah, like this guy here, but their learning might not be as well. And this allows us to pick his traits. I think we're the best option. So let's go and take a look at Ivar now. So remember, he's bossy and we just assigned him to the stewardship. So let's get him educated and probably not gonna be us doing that, though our stewardship is 17. I would like to educate Thor. So instead we'll have one of our other concubines, so she's not his mother, but she does have the best stewardship, decent learning as well. So we'll have her educate him. Because there's nobody else who has stewardship quite as high. Now I don't know if there's anybody else. Uh, Dala, she's rowdy so we could go ahead and give her an education trait. She's robust so what we could do is do the martial education. Also have her go down entry. But you know what? I really wanted to get a shield maiden. But Saga unfortunately died from consumption. So maybe we could do that with Dala instead. But we'll be able to educate her ourselves. Because again, I think we're going to be doing that with Thor. Just I really like the fact that he's got that really nice trait. So instead, I mean we have a lot of people who have good martial skill including some some women. I'm not sure how our wife would feel about us giving our daughter to one of our other women, but that's what we're gonna do. I don't think we care about her feelings in this matter. We'll assign our children to whoever we want. So yeah, we'll have to see which childhood trait Thor gets. So we're gonna go ahead and do this until we get one more phase completed. Kinda sucks we had to do so many to get a decent percentage here since these phases are so long. Really, I think the getting the balance one was not the best choice because the scheme potential is fine at the 100%. It's really the scheme phase length that we needed to adjust there. We had two here. I think part of the problem is we're just not getting as many points. Our followers aren't as good in these two roles as they are with these three agent roles. So if somebody wants to join the Varengian Guard, this is one of our champions. He's not that great. So I'm actually okay with him going. I mean, he's 36. 
Yeah, let's go and let him go in this particular case. All right, so we're at the 83% and we have the 10 advantages, allowing us to increase it up to 93%. So yeah, definitely should be successful with that percentage. That got us 206 gold. We're now at 595. So that is enough to go and invest in our fourth and last building. And I think we're gonna get the baggage train. There are plenty of other options. So the supply tent, I think we looked at all these earlier in the series. Probably wanna get the, the mess tent. Just wanna show you guys what the other choices are. And remember, another thing that we need to consider is the potential internal upgrades, which you can't see those through here. This one would be nice for the increased travel speed and safety. It's not bad, but we're gonna get the baggage train. And that's really the reason why we're gonna choose that is for the internal upgrades that are available. Uh, we have some good ones from the freebooters. So let's go and get the baggage train. It's gonna take six months to get completed. It was also quite cheap. So let's go and travel back here where they're no longer occupied. So we can go and visit the castle holding. Uh, we do need some provisions, so we'll take a look after we go to the tavern here. We'll listen to the story. This is a stewardship one. We did get the stewardship lifestyle experience points. I didn't like any of the possible recruits in the tavern, but here in the garrison, we've got a character with very good prowess and martial skill. He's also sadistic, so could be a good friend. So I think he's the one that we're gonna go ahead and hire. That's gonna cost us 82 gold. So I think that's good for this location. Now we just need to get those supplies. And we can do the Marshall Challenge or the Intrigue one, but we'd likely fail that one. So let's do the Marshall Challenge, 80% chance and we failed. It's quite unfortunate because we could have used a bit more supplies. So I suppose that's all we needed to do here. Before we leave, which I will take a look, see if there's any other quests. We could do this one real quick. That one did not take very long for us to do last time. So maybe we'll do that, but we could also make some requests. Uh, we have this character here. We did a contract for him last episode. We can only get to 12 gold, so we'll probably just go for the provisions since we did fail to get provisions in the settlements. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and do this mission. This shouldn't take too long, get us a bit more money though. Money is no longer as much of an issue for us. And, and that's something I find to be the case as a landless character. It's so much easier to get money than it is when you're landed. So I think that's kind of strange because you'd think that a landed character, you know, be able to collect taxes from those lands would have a lot more money. But that's not the case. So our new son here, uh, we're just gonna name him Hallstein. He does not have any of uh, the traits, unfortunately. So we certainly don't want to go with the option that focuses on success chance. The problem with going with this one, which you know, focuses on decreasing the phase length is that you only have one agent that will increase the potential. All the rest are just decreasing the phase length. So I don't know if you'll get the potential high enough. I suppose because the phase lengths are so quick, I, I suppose we could try and do this. Cause yeah, they'd be so quick that maybe you could get more advantages. And then with the balanced option, the thing I don't like about this one is cause it also focuses a bit too much on the scheme potential and not enough on decreasing the phase length. I wanna do these faster. So you know what, we're gonna try doing this one for once. You know, focusing on the phase length. So we're gonna want our best character here in the muscle since it's gonna be our only way of increasing the success chance. So Herman is gonna be doing this. That gets us up to 61%, so we'll definitely have to get a lot of advantages. So at the moment, the phases are 57 days. So we're gonna see how much we can decrease that by. So it seems like Sigurd would be best in this spot here. And then our son would do really well as a foot pad as well. So let's go and assign him there. And then our lookout, we could have our wife do that. It doesn't really matter, they both have the same, I guess the same position, they're both lookouts. They're both gonna have 24 there. And so that will decrease the phase length to 10 days. I would like to have seen it a bit shorter. But that's not too bad guys, that should allow us to get quite a few of the advantages here, which is the only way we're gonna get this passed is if we get a lot of advantages because the 61% uh, is just too low. So I'm not really entirely sure what the, the best way to do that would be. So like, is it better to have the slower phases but the higher scheme potential so you don't have to do as many phases because you don't need all those advantages? Or is it better to have the quicker phases and then you gotta have more phases in order to get the extra advantages because you're 
your uh, potential is too low. So we've gotten this event before one of our other sons, Nurture. However, because our camp purpose is different, this event is different as well. This first sentence is the same, but these ones are different. It's fortunate for my son Wolfgar, then, that he finds himself in the company of the most cunning thieves, ruthless bandits, and vicious scum that I've been able to gather. A fine environment for a young boy to grow up in, and one where he seems determined to take his many lessons to heart. So the traits that he would get are also going to be different than the last time we got this. So your children are being affected uh, by your camp purpose. I'm actually fine with him getting one of these five traits. Could instead just increase his martial, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go with this option here, and we'll see which trait he gets. So he's callous. Okay. So he got his first trait. So, oh, looks like we failed the scheme. So that's unfortunate. And also, we're being kicked out of Bavaria. So we need to leave. So he doesn't imprison us. So we'll have to travel back to where our camp is. Uh, unfortunately, we did just get delayed because we got lost. And we got this sensual proposal again. This is Osterhild. She is hoping to become our lover. I think we're just going with the same option we've been going for. I don't know that Magnus is ever going to have a true lover. You know, he has his concubines, he has his wife, but he's not really, like, in love with any of them. Or at least not yet. So that will likely get her pregnant again. If she's not already. Let me just double check on that. Yeah, she's not pregnant. What happened to that? You know what? That was Valence. Yeah, Valence, who is the one who just had two children for us. I uh, should probably pause that so we don't get ourselves arrested. So I think we're going to go into Italy next, and then we could start heading over, over to the Byzantine Empire. Bavaria is quite large now, and so there's not going to be anywhere to stop until we get into Italy. I suppose we're going to visit Venice. Yeah, why not? Because this is a special location here where you get uh, quite a few bonuses because you're visiting both you know, the the city and the doge's palace. So this is going to cost almost all of our provisions. Jeez, we might need to stop somewhere first. Like maybe right here in this uh, duchess's lands to purchase some resources, some provisions. Yeah, that'll only take 1936, so we'll still have a thousand. Looks like some of these areas that we're traveling through are going to be quite dangerous. So we might end up having some negative events. So it seems these two are engaging in a romantic relationship, which she is already married to Ganupa. I suppose because he's such an older man and this guy's younger. Young champion of ours. So we can have them driven apart. But again, I just don't think we care. So they can be lovers all they want. That is for Ganuba to handle. Uh, we did get that baggage train finished up. Excellent. So we're going to go back into our camp. And we can take a look at the bonuses we're getting. Now we can find more officers using the Scout for Talent. Well, I have not used this travel option yet in the series. I had one or two people suggest that we use it for finding new followers. But here's the thing. It's only for open positions for officers. So if you don't have any open officer positions or all the positions that are open, you don't want anybody in those uh, particular officer positions, then there's no reason to use it. Uh, but it does unlock a new officer position, which is the head hoarder. This one would be useful because we have started to have some issues with provisions. Uh, we'll also receive more transport contracts. Uh, provision capacity is increased. Supply capacity also goes up. Your travel speed will be higher and then it affects the skirmisher regiments. So we could go ahead and get the next level here, uh, or we could take a look at the internal upgrade slots. There's a lot of good options here. The Anvil Steeds one, this unlocks the head groom, increasing travel speed and the army movement speed. So very helpful, and on top of that, it'll improve your cavalry if you happen to have any. And then you also just get a travel speed bonus from having that. Here's another one that increases your knight effectiveness based on one of your skills. You can see how if you get all of these, your Knight of Factiveness would get absolutely ridiculous. Another way that being landless is kind of uh, unbalanced. There's also a provision trackers, unlocking the Huntsman Officer. Uh, any relevant contracts have increased success chance. Several other bonuses here. There's Kennels. This unlocks the Kenneler, 
That will increase knight effectiveness and enables the toss to dogs execution prisoner method. So you can feed your prisoners to your dogs. Increases the opinion of everybody in your camp. Just happy they have dogs around. Also improves your skirmishers. But most importantly, it unlocks the adopt a kennel dog decision. So you can get a pet dog whenever you want. Normally you gotta wait for that random event to fire. Uh, siege engineers, while well, getting the chief engineer would be helpful because that increases the siege progress regardless of whether you have the siege weapons or not. Most of these bonuses are for the siege weapons, which we don't have. Uh, the portable shrine is kind of important because this is the only way as a landless character that you can demand a conversion of characters. Also unlocks the camp priest and that grants you learning as does just having this. Also increases your Heidi, so that's a okay one. Loyal Scribes, this is another learning base one. Uh, Marting Grounds us for stewardship. Proof of Claims, that unlocks the Witness, which will increase prestige. And then you get Diplomacy for each level of fame. Uh, the Ransom Cages, this is probably what we're gonna get here. So we'll get more gold from ransoming prisoners. Also, if we need to ransom any of our followers, it would be cheaper. Uh, prisoners are less likely to escape. But most importantly, allows us to abduct other characters, which we could use to get more ransoms or hooks or whatever. There's also the expert negotiators. This one requires that you have the scholar camp purpose. There might have been other ones that required certain camp purposes as well. This last one is the private tents. So this would, as you'd expect, increase the fertility. Also, you can occasionally recruit interesting characters. Here's some other nice bonuses as well, including the monthly entry lifestyle experience bonus. So that one's not too bad. But again, I think the one we're gonna start with, which remember we can get several of these. Uh, we're gonna start with the ransom cages, since I'd said I wanted to get that. So that's gonna take eight months. So we have finally arrived. We've got to visit the castle holding, as we are very low in provisions at the moment. So the story is a stewardship one. Uh, I think I had said that we we're gonna spend the 18 gold to get that experience for wit. Cause I believe that now unlocked the next level here. Yeah, it did. So that is now gonna grant us a plus one diplomacy. If we didn't already have it, it seems like we did. Yeah, maybe I'd already gotten that. We're also gonna recruit this Nunzia. Not sure if we'll arrange for her to marry maybe one of our sons. Or if we could turn her into a concubine. Let's we'll take a look at the situation and see exactly what we want to do with her. See if there's anybody else that we might want to recruit. Always looking for more champions. Well, I would recruit this guy, but we're kind of short on money. So, you know what? Let's not spend any more. So, we just need to deal with the supply situation now. Don't even have the money to purchase them if we wanted to. Though, of course, we never purchase our supplies. Instead, we're just going to try and have our wife steal them, which she was successful. So, 2,040 provisions. That got us back up to where we needed to be at. Before we head to Venice, let's do this contract. It's a criminal contract to abduct a foe. We've done this before, but yeah, it's not really too far away. So it seems with this one here, the balanced option is really the one focused on secrecy. So I think we had seen that before, so we definitely don't want to go for that. Uh, this one also, you know, focuses on secrecy. It has three slots for that, but it's a little bit more balanced because it does have an option to decrease the the phase length. So I think that's what I picked on that one. So definitely don't want to do that again. Uh, we don't want to do this one here because it doesn't increase the success chance enough. So we'd have to do a lot of phases. So let's go with this one. This is the one that focuses on success chance. We'll probably have Herman be our thug since uh, the muscle and Munder can do this really well. Yeah, so we'll have him do that. Let me just double check, make sure we don't want to have him be our foot pad instead. We definitely want the best possible character here. So that'd be Sigurd, because we want to decrease the phase length. So that's the best we're going to be able to do, unfortunately, 35 days. Uh, we also want to make sure we're increasing the secrecy as much as possible, put our wife here. And then yeah, with the thugs, we'll just place the best characters. So yeah, Munder will do this. So it looks like our eldest son will not be involved and this particular scheme. So I forgot to do something with Nunzia and thus uh, her and Matthias now want to get married. I'm actually fine with that. 
I don't care. I don't even know what else we were going to do with her. Did we have a wife for Amunder? We have not. So Amunder needs a spouse. So we could have married her to him. We'll just have to look. You know, on the different locations to go see if there's anybody else that will want to arrange that marriage for our second son. We got the ransom cages completed. All right, excellent. We also finished this up. So let's go ahead and complete it. So we don't need any further advantages because we have the 100% chance of success. All right, so before we leave, we might want to make use of our request here. We could just get provisions. However, this Duchess here is not yet married. I highly doubt she'd agree to marry our son, but uh, it would be interesting if Amunder was to marry a Duchess. Now, as a character, he's a really good knight, so it would be unfortunate to lose him because he would move to her court. I think it'd be interesting if she would agree. Again, she probably won't. Uh, and if she refuses, there's nobody else that we can uh, arrange a marriage with, or at least no no ladies. Maybe we might have a woman in our camp, though they generally seem to get married pretty quick or become a concubine. But yeah, if we have a woman, maybe in that case we could find a man in her court who she's willing to marry off. But I assume here that she's not going to be willing to do this marriage. Not only is she refusing, and it's so bad that she wouldn't accept a matrilineal marriage, and that negative thousand from the different faith is really the main issue here, but would we want our son to marry her anyways? She has a lover's pox, so she must have had a few lovers in her life. Now let's go ahead and travel over to Venice. So that's only going to take 380 provisions. Of course, when we get there, we get all those bonuses, and it seems we were just ambushed by the law. They're well armed and armored, too much so for an opportunist attack, a militia then, or perhaps household troops, come to cut me down for my crimes. A giant of a man leads a charge, bellowing his challenge to me at the top of his mighty lungs, death, death or glory. So we can duel the lead attacker, I think that's what we did last time. It does fit our character, though he is getting a lot older guys, he's 48 years old, but his prowess is higher than ever. At 54, this character's only 11. It's too stupid to know that he can't uh, defeat us. You never know, maybe he gets lucky. That's the way the duel system works. Could just ensure he dies and get the prestige, or we could flee, but we would never do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and duel the lead attacker. Of course. Won't read all these, but we'll do this one first, because I like getting that knife to hand, increasing your intrigue for five years, which is a good one to have based on that hunter trait. So go ahead and do that. And then next we're gonna want to probably do the Berserker. Yeah, the Berserker option, guys. Few can stand before my Berserker gang, and my opponent is no exception. Brashley Artizone hurdles at me. Sword hung slack, clearly trying to give me a vigorous sculling. Bold, but tear rewards caution. I bring my axe up for a quick slash that hacks out his throat. The resultant explosion of gore is met with a nightmarish half scream, half gurgle from Artizone who continues to stagger forward. While his sword is in hand, I can't risk going in for a mercy kill. Instead, he and I simply stare at each other till the tide of spilling blood takes the light from his eyes. Goodbye. All right, so that went as expected. Gained 250 prestige since we defeated him in single combat. And we're also gonna get those bonuses from visiting Venice and the Doge's Palace. I'm really surprised that we haven't got any perks yet with all the locations that we've visited so far. I suppose we'll go into the castle holding. We don't really need provisions, so I guess because we have such a, a maximum amount, we could go ahead and gather some. Again, we won't be paying for those. We never pay for them. Uh, we do have some money as well, so we'll see if there's anybody worth recruiting here. Uh, he's okay. He's not the military engineer, but we generally just lead our own troops. We haven't even been doing uh, much fighting lately. We just do these contracts. Yeah, he's not too bad. Uh, but this character is a better champion, and we always need more champions. Uh, also, he's a torturer, so he fits well in our group. He's got good martial skill, so I think Aldebert is who we want to recruit. He's 63 gold, and I guess we could spend the gold to increase our prowess. Oh, wait a minute. We're not just increasing our prowess. We're getting the Aspiring Blade Master lifestyle trait. So that increases prowess by three and gives some additional bonuses. So we definitely want to go with that option. All right, so now our prowess is 57. 
pretty good for a man of our age. Let's go ahead and head back. We'll go to the tavern. We'll listen to the story. Maybe get a uh, point in stewardship here. And I suppose we could see if there's anybody to recruit. We don't have a lot of money at the moment. So you got an older character. So unfortunately we just got the three month bonus there. Uh, he would make a good knight as well. Uh, both these characters would. So I guess you want to base it off of their traits and their tributes. Really they're just uh, martial focused. Uh, this guy's just brave and generous. He's just humble and trusting. Honestly, both of these characters probably aren't going to like us much. And we do have some issues in our camp with people who don't like us. So you know what, guys? Let's go and save our money and not hire either of them. I think they would just uh, you know, dislike us and cause trouble. Uh, let's also go ahead and try and get some supplies for free, of course. Not going to want to go with that option. So let's go ahead and do this one to try and intimidate him. And it seems it did not work. Okay. At least we have a decent number of provisions, so we didn't absolutely have to succeed there. So because we got the ransom cages, we do have a new officer position. In fact, we have two of these available. We haven't hired anybody for the head porter yet either. Uh, Gnubu would be good, but again, he has a lot of positions, and it seems that Osterhild, our woman, also has good aptitude, so we'll assign her. And then we have the manhagler, where... Unfortunately, nobody is good at this. They're all average aptitude. I suppose we'll assign Herman to do this. Speaking of prisoners, we actually have one at the moment. So unfortunately, we can't ransom him for anything but a hook. So we might want to recruit him. I don't know if he would actually serve us as a knight with the prowess of only 10. He's got good marshal. If we get him to convert, I don't see any reason not to recruit him. So yeah, we'll go ahead and send that off. And then I suppose we'll want to do one of these contracts. There's quite a few in the area. We haven't seen this one yet. This is a criminal contract to rustle animals. There's also that heist treasury, which gets us pretty good money. So I might want to do that eventually as well. But we'll do this one first just because we haven't done it yet. So let's go and travel over there. See that we could get some pretty good money, particularly... If we're successful, we will keep our camp in Venice. And it seems that a seagull has shredded the remains of our supplies. In my rage, I could have killed the winged menace, but we're stopped by our caravan leader, Dietrich. He says, stay your hand, you loathsome buffoon. Don't you know it's bad luck to kill a bird at sea? Who are you calling a buffoon, Dietrich? So we can show the bird mercy. No, <laughs> we wouldn't want to do that. Nothing will stop me from killing this blasted bird. Uh, we'll be closer to forming a rivalry, Dedrick. We'll lose opinion with them because he'll hate us. Looks like we got the hatred uh, opinion penalty twice. 50% chance that we'll be successful in killing the bird. We'll lose stress and we'll also get a good meal, increasing travel safety. But 50% chance that we'll be unsuccessful or maybe we're, we're successful but we just get bad luck here. And that will decrease the travel safety and we'll gain stress. Uh, but that's the option we're going to go with. And of course, we get cursed. It's 50-50. You know how that one's going to go. And this character did agree, so now he's joined our camp. So we're trying to steal this herd of goats. A few different options. The Palace Challenge has a 97% chance to be successful. So that's the one we're going to want to go with. Marshall is just slightly lower, so you could go with either of these. Uh, we don't have the suitable officer for this option, and then this is the stress one, where you have a 100% chance of being successful, but you gain stress. So we'll go with that, and our ruthlessness did pay off. So now we have the next location, and we're going to do the same option here, because it's two encounters total. And because we completed both of these, we'll get the full amount of money there. So now we got to return back home. We got more provisions as well, so that's helpful. So before we end today's episode, I'd like to see how we're doing when it comes to all these traits. Nothing changed here for Traveler or Hassa Looter. However, the Gals Bait, we've gotten two new ones here. So we got to the level three for Marauder. That's increasing the prowess. And then we also got our first level in Poacher. And that's giving us some stewardship and a plus 5% bonus for the provisions gain. Our character is incredibly skilled with a 33 marshal, 20 stewardship, 24 entry, learnings, just average. 
And of course, he sucks at diplomacy still, even with all those bonuses he has. But then that's insane prowess at 57. That's pretty darn good. So I think Dala's the last one who we assign a guardian to and got an education for. So let's take a look and see if Thor got his childhood trait. He does not yet have it. He's only two years old. Magnus is currently 48 years old, and his son and current heir is 20. And he's looking okay. He's got that 12 Marshall. Everything else is kind of low. Prowess is 13, so not too bad. He does have the Traveler trait already, but they have not had any children yet. Probably getting a lot of penalties here due to her being reclusive and a drunkard. However, you would get bonuses due to her being comely. But yeah, we need to find a spouse for our second son, Amunder. And we also need to start getting an idea of which character we want to play as next. We have a lot of children, so quite a few options. Here's the last one, Halstein. Yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking. Obviously, we still have many years left to go. We're still not that old, and we have very good health. Though, with the way that Magnus lives, you never know. Especially with how unlucky we've been in this campaign. He could die at any moment. But we're still chilling out in Venice. We have a lot of contracts that we could do. Could also travel to some other locations, see if we can't uh, get some more travel experience. Uh, Venice is an absolutely beautiful city, so I feel like Magnus would like to stay here for a bit longer. Uh, we went here last year and really enjoyed it. Out of all the locations that we went to Europe, Venice was definitely our favorite. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.